Today, I want to share one of the ways you can use the new luminosity range mask in Affinity Photo 2. I'll be using the new masking tool to do some luminosity blending with this landscape photo. I shot this using a Fuji X-T3 camera and a Fuji 10-24 lens at 10mm. I've already pre-processed the RAW file using DxO Photo Lab 6 to address some problems like lens distortion. I then exported the image as a DNG file, opening it in Affinity Photo 2. Because Affinity Photo 2 treats the DNG file as a RAW file, it automatically loads it in the Develop Persona, which we see here. Notice that the image is a little bit overexposed, which is causing the sky to lose some of its colour. What I'm going to do to fix this is process two versions of the RAW file. One will be optimised for the bright areas of the scene, and the other for the shadows. I'll then use the luminosity range mask to blend the two images together. To optimise this image for the sky, I'll start by reducing the exposure by minus 0.5. This improves the exposure and the colour, but the clouds are now lacking contrast. Let's increase the contrast slider to around 20%, and I'll also add some clarity to the image of about 15% to give the clouds more definition. Notice that I can see the colour of the sky more clearly now, so I can address the colour balance. Let's start with the temperature slider, which I'll increase to around 8200. The sky now appears to have a pink cast to it, so I'll reduce the tint slider to 0%. Let's see what effect reducing the highlight slider has. This seems to be an improvement, so I'll reduce it to around minus 30%. And before I forget, I'll set the output to be Adobe RGB, because I like to use that for my editing in Affinity Photo. The sky is now looking much better. If you compare it against the starting image, you can see the improvement these few adjustments have made. I don't need to bother though checking the sky for noise, because I applied Deep Prime Noise Reduction in DxO Photo Lab. Now don't worry about the foreground looking dreadful at this stage. We'll be creating a second version of the image optimised for that. First though, it's time to develop this image and take it into the photo persona. To do this, make sure the output is set to a raw layer using the embedded option. This will only be visible when you're using either the view or the zoom tools. If you've got one of the other tools selected, you won't see these options. Setting the output to the RAW layer is very important in this process. After setting the output type, click the Develop button to switch back to the Photo Persona. The next step is to duplicate our RAW layer. I can do this by right-clicking on the layer in the Layer Studio panel and selecting the Duplicate option. I'll also rename the first layer to be Sky, and the new Duplicate layer to be Ground. Now I can open the new Ground layer by double-clicking it. I'm then back in the develop persona, where you can see the changes I made to the RAW file previously have been copied to this layer. And because we've used the RAW layer with the embedded option as the output, we can amend the two layers independently. Looking now at the foreground in this image, you can see that it's way too dark and contrasty. Let's start by resetting the shadow and highlights, and then the contrast adjustment sections. When I now increase the contrast slider, a setting of about 12 looks right. I'll then do the same with the clarity setting, where a setting of around 5 looks good. I'm going to leave the white balance unchanged for this image though, because the rocks look about the right colour. Now I can tweak the exposure setting, and I'll dial it back to around minus 0.3. I'll also increase the brightness to 5%, and the black point to about 1%. All I want to do with these changes is create a good exposure for the foreground rocks, so I'm ignoring the sky. Now because these rocks have plenty of detail, I'm going to apply some additional sharpening to this image. I'll zoom in to 100% using the navigator so that I can see the sharpening. Then in the details tab, we have the detail refinement section, which is where we apply the image sharpening. Because I pre-processed this image with DxO Photo Lab, it doesn't actually need much sharpening. I'll just use a small radius of about 10%, and an amount of 25%, which makes a slight improvement. I'm now happy with the overall look of the rocks, so I can click the develop button and return to the photo persona. If I turn off the ground image, you can see how the rocks are better than in the sky image. Now to blend the two images together, I'm going to use a luminosity range mask that's new in Affinity Photo 2. The luminosity range mask allows me to blend the two layers together based on how light or dark the pixels are in that layer. 
when I click the preview option, we're viewing the mask, which is completely white at the moment. Because a white mask doesn't hide anything, we see the ground layer and not the sky layer below it. But what we want to see is the sky layer in the brightest areas. Now watch what happens when I move the white end of the luminance range curve down. Notice the mask turns black in the light areas of the sky, but the dark areas of the ground stay white. This is allowing us to see the ground layer for the dark areas of the rocks, but hiding it to reveal the sky layer in the brightest areas. If I turn off the mask preview, you can see the two images are now blending. You can see the improvement this makes if I turn the luminosity range mask off and on. Let's go back to the mask preview to see if we can improve it. If I now move the white end of the curve left, it turns more of the light areas of the image to black in the mask. Then, if I do the same at the black end of the curves line, it turns more of the foreground rocks white. Let's turn off the mask preview again to check the blended image. If I hide the ground layer, you can see that it's mainly visible in the rocks, but not the sky. Looking at the overall image, the luminosity range mask has created a great blend, but it's missing something. We seem to be losing the sense that this is an evening scene, because we've opened most of the shadows. Ideally, we want to see some of the dark areas in the clouds, the rocks, and the edge in the distance. The way we can do this is by adding a second mask to the ground layer. Now I can paint on the mask using the paintbrush tool. I'm doing this using a low opacity brush with the hardness set to 0%. Then, when I paint with black on these areas, we see more of the darker layer, creating the impression of shadows. And because both layers use the embedded raw layer option, I can reopen them in the develop persona to tweak their adjustments. What's great about this is that in the develop persona, I'm now seeing a preview of the blended images. I can see the effect of my adjustments in the preview, and I'm not trying to second guess the effect they're going to have on the finished image. If I close the develop persona again, you can see that it's the same as the photo persona. Using the new luminance range mask, you have a lot of flexibility for blending different versions of an image. But importantly, it also makes the adjustments appear more natural. And it's the same with the new hue range mask, which I demonstrate in this video. This is another new tool in Affinity Photo 2 that can help you make more natural adjustments. Thanks for watching today, and please don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see you back again soon to watch more of my videos.